Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to PICA TV in our second episode. Today, we're very excited to have our guest, Andy Griffin, who is the managing principal of Keepsake Box USA, along with our host, Paul Zaffirana from PICA Marketing Group. Today's uh, webinar, or actually our episode here, is going to be on packaging dynamics, uh, going from basic to amazing. And uh, we're going to introduce our two, your host, Paul Zaffiran. Everybody knows him. Uh, he's been around for a long time, founder of PICA Marketing Group, 13-time international award winner for creative marketing campaigns and holder of an MAS certification, has an extensive background on company stores and on this subject as well on packaging. He's a very creative guy. I've known him for a long time, and he comes from the great state of Michigan, uh, along with our Today's guest is Andy Griffin, as I mentioned. Uh, he is the co-founder and managing partner, 25 years of business leadership, a veteran in packaging in the promo industry, award-winning creative marketer, and product development guru. And I just don't say that. I know this guy personally, and he is absolutely amazing. And I think that you're going to gain a lot from this presentation today. And I'm going to turn it over to your host, uh, Paul Zaffirano. Paul? Oh, hey, thanks, Cliff. I really appreciate it. And Andy, welcome to the program today. We're really excited to have you here. Um, thanks. I don't know about the guru part, Cliff, but I, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Sometimes you just uh, got to go with it, right? <laughs> thanks, Paul. Th thanks for having me. This is going to be great. Um, hopefully, we could teach uh, some of the folks that are listening a little bit about packaging and how it's coming together. But really, thanks for having me on. You're, you're out there. You're doing it. You're one of the best in the industry, and uh, we're, we're proud to be partnered with you. Um, and, uh, Amazing. You know, we could, we without, your, without your help, too. I mean, you've been around for 25 years. I've been doing this for a little bit of time. And we've seen a lot of, like, crazy things happen over that last, you know, 25-plus years, right? You know, the old, yeah. you know, when, when people think of packaging, you know, they think of, like, the brown box, right? So what's, what's transpired since the you know, the realm of the brown box. Um, you know, what, there's so many new ways of packaging stuff today. What are some of the things you're seeing out there from that, uh, over that course of time? Yeah, so the brown box, I mean, that that was it. When we started, it was, you know, maybe you can get a white box, right? Maybe you got a white box for packaging and maybe, uh, you know, you could throw a label on it if you had a color printer and way back when. Um, Everything has changed. Technology, everything that's out there has given uh, birth to basically packaging as not just an afterthought, but the forethought, right? Um, you know, options today, you've got corrugated boxes that could be printed both sides digitally, variable data, meaning that, you know, you could have a, an individual's name on every box that goes out, if you wish, Um you got two piece boxes that could be handcrafted and made, not just ones that are, you know, wrapped and they could be, you have the embellishments of gold foil. You've got the print technology that can go on top of it. Hinge boxes, as you can see on the screen here, you know, slider boxes, displays, um, hat boxes, pizza, everything in the box world. And then outside the box world, you can decorate with, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, you can decorate with some tissues, decorate with some custom gift wrap. So the technology, some of the options that we've had um, out there that are available to us lend the birth to the experience of packaging. And that's basically what we want to try and drive home. And, and I know um, you, you get this, Paul, but yeah. the experience of, of what customer or what your customer should look for when they're presenting something to someone. Yeah, right? it's, it's not, all, all, all the images on there. I mean, it's not just a rectangle or a square box anymore. I mean, it's, it's a variety of shapes and sizes because no two products or, or packages are really ever the same. Right. Yeah. And this is just, just this, this slide presentation just touches a little bit on what can happen. And we're building boxes now that basically, um, I don't want to use the word explode, but they, they sort of come alive. When, when opened, right? And balloons fly out and, you know, uh, you, can, uh, you can go real crazy with what, what's available today. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's that making that memory of receiving a, a, a gift, a presentation, or, you know, if you're working with influencers, um, you know, having that influencer, because uh, I know some of your end clients might work in that influencer market, but having an influencer really be surprised and wowed and bring forth a true experience of getting 
something that's you know in the yeah. mail. And and not not to outshine the gift that's there. I mean that is part of it, but it's how you present that gift to to somebody that's out there. You know, that's what all makes about it all that experience, right? You want them, the influencer, the recipient to have that that brand experience that you can customize it, the the packaging to, to fit the message and have that experience. It's no it's not so much about how much or how fast you can slap your logo in front of somebody, but what kind of end user experience can they have when they part, when they interact with your brand? Yeah, see, it, it, not to get scientific, but it's a little bit scientific, right? So, uh, and I think National Geographic did something like this, where the endorphins <laughs> in your brain, right? And I, I'm serious, I'm serious. So the endorphins in your brain when you receive a gift are at their highest level right before you open the box, right? So you get this gift, and, and, and the longer you can take those endorphins, the longer you make that experience last, the lasting impression it has in your customer's brain or the person receiving the gift's brain. So what we try and do is, you know, if you can have an outside plain box, and the inside is just packed with color, right? So you're opening it up, and, and they're wowed by what's inside. It just looks like a regular Amazon gift that's coming down, and, you know. So that experience can, you know, take it to another level. You can have multiple reveals. You hear these words reveals, right? Opening up a box is a reveal. Underneath there's another box. That's a reveal. All these things play into the experience and play into that lasting impression that they get from the brand, right? So um, packaging now, like it's never been, to get back to your question, like, you know, it's, it's playing that huge part. It's playing what print used to play with for brochures and catalogs. We all wanted to be wow with beautiful images. That's what boxes are doing now, right? In yeah. a nutshell. Yeah, I mean it, that's it's amazing where it's where it's all um, coming going to right now with that with uh, with being able to do that. And it doesn't have to necessarily break the bank. You don't have to do these huge runs like you used to have to do in the past. You know, with the with the realm of the digital world out there, we can do some smaller runs, very personalized runs on on doing this to really bring that that budget home to you know because we deal with all different size organizations from small to large. If everybody's got a different kind of budget for it, you know, so being yeah. able to do that yeah, here at here at keepsake, yeah, here at keepsake, we we can do one box. I haven't had I, I can't figure out how to do less than one, so we could do literally one box just the way that we manufacture there's no dyes there's no anything so yeah it's an, a bit of an expensive box but you can do it and we do it all the time for hey i got this really exclusive award you know what i mean like you know it's not where we live and breathe but you can do it and to your point manufacturing has caught up to that now right technology has caught up to that so um short run packaging is in it's what everybody's doing Right, which, which, which is great because, like I said, everybody's got a different, you know, they're running a small program or, or whatnot of a big, a big uh, end user or influencer portion of it. Um, that brings you, like, to the, the next part of the question here. As they're going through on this, you know, how long does it typically take to go from this great idea going, hey, we want to do this thing and, and package it up to the final, you know, deliverable on it? You know, sure. what, what should be considered when we're doing that? But very important question, um, believe it or not. So here's the deal. You have some different things here. So when you're talking customized boxes, um, short answer, 15 days, right next realm, right? Long answer is this. You need to sort of have the, the products, right? So what we need to do first is determine a quote, and we need to sort of look at a box. Um, how big is the box going to be? We need to know the products that are in there. So the challenge becomes of a quoting stage is, you know, customers have all these choices on products and you're working with them Paul, to find the perfect one that fits their whole project and campaign. Um, once that is done, uh, we would size up a box and quote it for you. And that takes only a day or so. But then when we get into the actual order, we need those products to build a box. Whether we're doing a custom insert for the box itself, whether we're just packing in the box, we obviously want to make it. It's you know, it is a custom box. We want to make it fit everything perfectly. So you know, we we ask you to get some, you know, product in, and we do proofs, right? So for us, that generally takes uh, three days. So from when you get us the product, you will have a finished, perfect pre-production sample in your hands uh, within three days. Right, not just a white comp, not just anything. So that's that's what technology does for us. You know, we're allowed to do that. 
The production side, as soon as you get the approval with your client, uh, production takes about seven to 10 days to make the box. Um, finishing and fulfillment, uh, basically, you know, you're looking at about another two to three days. If you want us to put the product in the boxes and send it out, we, we do here, we do about 35,000 drop shipments every month on the average. So you can be amazed at how many of, packages are going to be. So, yeah. Um, so that's, you know, that adds a couple of days on too. So I, I generally say 50 days. Now that's boxes, right? Um, tissue paper. We do some custom Ford color digital, take Paul's face, put it on a piece of tissue paper. And some people like that for gift bags and for you. I don't know how many people on my face on their gift wrap, but you know. <laughs> I, my mom mom I don't know. My mom might like that. I so, so basically, um, you know, that might take five days, right? In fact, it does take five days from when you tell us, you know, you approve the final proof. So it varies a little bit, but you have to leave some time. You're talking about a custom product. It's not like taking, hey, I like this coffee mug. I get it from so-and-so. They stamp, you know, they stamp it and they send it out in 24 hours just because right. the product is there. These boxes are being built from um, um, by hand, right? For the most part, I mean by machine. But when we assemble them and put them together, some of the ones are very they're handcrafted pieces uh, of art sometimes, and and um, you know, so it takes a little bit of time. And then again, at the end here, I see you have time of year. So yeah, Christmas time, which comes a little earlier than Christmas, um, so everybody knows. Um, you know, uh, it it. You know, there are the seasonal time of year that can impact it. We try and keep it down low, um, you know, on, on our turnaround times uh, you know, and such. So, you know, that's basically it. You just got to leave some time. Right. So, I mean, at, at that level there, that's just the, that's the production of the packaging. So we have to kind of massage the idea well in advance of that, get those pieces picked out and sorted out, get a sample over to you and get that all ready so that we can make this thing very impactful, right? So there's there's a little bit of pre-planning that has to happen on this. It doesn't just happen overnight. Um, you know, you go through the concept phase and bringing the samples in and making sure it all is gonna work within that. So there's a lot that goes into it um, prior to it to, to have a very successful campaign, right? Yeah, and, and you know that that some of the hangups we get are that, you know, packaging is thought as, a, as a, almost an afterthought. Right. Where, you know, and I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? Like, wait, I want a really nice box for that. You know, just get it for me. And you call up and, you know, folks are like, but we only have four days to your deadline to get it out the door. Yeah. And that, you know, that, that unfortunately is, is a little bit tight. So, yeah, planning, pre-planning, that's what you guys do best with your customers. I'm sure, you know, you try and lead them and say, hey, look, you know, it's going to take X. So if you're thinking about this, let's see if we have some, uh, you know see if we have some time. So we're working hard with technology, with everything else to drive those turnaround times down. It is one of the biggest challenges we're putting ourselves towards uh, in an industry where a lot of our competitors out there are driving, you know, going the opposite way. Um, you know, the pandemic was a challenge. It, it really brought to life packaging in, in a nutshell. And we'll yeah. talk about that a little bit. But, um, you know, uh, we're driving and striving to get those times down, those turnaround times down. So, so it works a little bit better for everybody. So that, that segues into my, into my next question for you. You know, as we're planning this and going forward, what steps and questions that, you know, our audience that's listening here um, ask to determine the best options for a packaging solution as we're doing all this? Um, well, first and foremost is how is it getting into the recipient's hands, right? Um, one of the challenges of, challenges of packaging is most of the time that's, hey, we're going to send it out UPS, FedEx, the U.S. Postal Service. Um, that presents a challenge, right? So the first thing we have to do is get that item safely into the hands because no matter how great of a box you have, if the mug shows up broken, it really doesn't. They're not going to remember the box, right? Remember the <laughs> they're not going to remember the mug. They're not going to remember you. It's just going to be a bad experience. So um, it's sort of beauty, you know, it's sort of protection over beauty and that has to be massaged. So um, one of the, you know, the best options sometimes we'll look at the products being sent, right? Um, if it's a breakable, we got to go one way. If it's non-breakable, maybe we can get away with doing something else, right? Um, also budget, budget is huge, right? We all, you know, every campaign has different budgets and we understand that. Um, 
you know, some people might have a larger budget. They really want to make a great impression. Um, you can go with some high-end packaging, some really wow factory stuff. Some might be a lower brand. We're just trying to hit this target market. Um, you know, we go to a step down. I just did a great campaign, and it was basically for college, and they sent out a box with a video inside of it. You lift up the lid, and the video automatically pops on, and it goes on. And it was to sort of recruit people who have already had, like, applications sent in, right? Uh, 2,000 video boxes went up to the Tier A people. 1,500 boxes were just a corrugated box with the same – they gave away a picture of this uh, frame with, with a pin in it that college does – eight pins in, the, in your in your career with the college they give you these milestone pins and a t-shirt so the one had a video the one did right tier a tier b and they sort of recognized in their campaign like okay you know we have different impressions we want to make on different people so um that comes into it too like what you're trying to do what audience you're trying to hit um you know what do you want to what kind of wow factor do you want to have um so, you know, it, all those things come into the realm, again, the shipping side of it. I, I think that's, you know, does that answer that question? I, I hope it yeah, does. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, the shipping part of it, too, really, it plays into it because if somebody's, you know, after we get into this, you know, three weeks of production time and the design time and figuring that all out up front, you know, it, how, how are you going to get in people's hands, right? Um, yeah. the planning, I think, is a really, really big, big portion of this to plan well in advance so that you can really give this you know, wow factor, everybody, because if it goes out, FedEx, UPS, USPS, um, you know, they're, they're all have their own innate challenges or, or yep. uh, time frames that they deal with. And that all factors yeah. in the budget. So, yeah. And, you know, Paul, we did, uh, we've done it a couple of times with you that, you know, we're available to get on with your clients and you and act as a team, right? Because they need package you, you want somebody that knows packaging how to do it and you know we we get together with you and your clients and sit down and discuss all this right um that sort of helps as well too right so you know we become a team we start to talk about the challenges what you're looking for what we're trying to do so we have it from step one we're, we're putting forth the best options the best solution for them for their campaign yeah we're, we're in a communication field right our job is to communicate that out there and to, and to have you know, the open discussions about what the overall, you know, outcome is to be with this, what the expectations are as we're going through it. And that's where working with somebody like us and, and, and you on this is a great way to, to manage those expectations and give you the reality of what's going to happen out there. Because otherwise, you know, if it's just based on like, hey, we need it, in, you know, with last thing four days, it sets everybody up for failure. Nobody wants that. We all want to succeed yeah. and do it and have a very good you know, positive um, outcome for them in the end, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly right. But that's why, that's why you do what you do for, <laughs> <laughs> and you do it well, and you do it well. I'm not blowing smoke up. No. no, and and but, it's not just me. I've got a great team behind me with you know with yourself, you know, as a partner of ours, to help us, you know, wade through the waters on it because I I know some stuff. But I don't know everything. And that's why I rely on you guys as as our partners in this to really see things that I may not see when we're doing it and bring it to light and go, hey, have you thought about doing it this way or doing it that way? Um, you know, and hey, did you know that the technology just just changed out there? Um, you know, and as we talk about the technology on this, how has that technology um, really impacted the uh, packaging industry? You know? Yeah. So uh, I touched on it a little bit before. It's it's what's driving what's out there today, right? Technology in the print realm um, is basically what's driving packaging. Um, digital print years ago, if you wanted to print a box, one box might have cost you two hundred dollars. Like you know, meaning yeah. like you know, because digital was so slow, right? It couldn't handle the materials that it handles now, right? So we were stuck with plain cartons. We were stuck with one-color cartons, which when you're doing a one-color carton, you had to go to a big carton house, a big manufacturer, and you had to order thousands of boxes, right? Um, you know, fast forward a little to today, and you can see on your screen some of the stuff that, you know, you could do full-color, beautiful image boxes. And the technology allows us to, um, you know, basically print these uh, 
pretty quick. I mean, we do a, our, our machines are capable of doing a four foot by eight foot sheet of corrugated in about a minute and 20 seconds, right? Now think about that. In, in the printing world, that might not mean anything, but in the printing world, that used to be a half hour, oh, right? Yeah. Like, you know, that, so, so the price was all the way up here. Packaging wasn't even an option to have four color packaging. If you did, you had to sort of print it, but though, like I said, you had to do this big giant run and it was very expensive. And, um, you, you can see that today, that's the, but, yeah, you can see that, that you know, yeah. the plain corrugated one to what you can do They're they're still corrugated underneath it. And I know some folks on the, on the series here have gotten one in the middle, you know, that we've used from a, yeah. a creative marketing standpoint. Um, and you can, you know, do yeah. the flaps and, and create that experience as the flaps open up and they see the next level of it to, to do it. It's a way you can really tell your brand story out there. Yeah, that, that was an awesome box that was put together. And, um, you know, just for that, we talked about the experience of opening up and you open it up and the inside flaps are printed, right? Like, you know, or the interior box is all printed and the outside isn't, right? So, um, you know, that, that's a good experience box. But yeah, the technology side of it, you know, and don't forget, we can cut these boxes too, right? So in, in days of old, you had to buy a die, a corrugated die is like $2,000, right? How do you do 50 boxes when you're just a die alone is almost $2,000, right? It was unheard of. So technology um, plays a major part in all of this. Then you, the embellishments to it, um, you know, when you talk about um, video screens and lights and sound chips and everything else, I know we'll, we'll you know, th those type of things also uh, add to the, you know, into technology, into the box itself. So again, it's building this beautiful uh, creation, if you would, right, as a box and driving home uh, a message, a brand, right? We talk about brands all the time, a, a brand. If you look at the cause box, right, that, that's building a very colorful way of presenting your brand, right? right. Not just a humdrum like the one you see on the screen here for BAF, right? It, that does it. It's good. And again, there's different budgets and all, but uh, it's just a really cool way to do right. it. So and technology is playing a huge part. And, and, and the one that's in the middle too, it, there, there's no brand on the outside of it. Our brand isn't anywhere on it. You know, it's uh, about that yeah. experience on it, right? That, that people are doing. So as, as you're, as you're kind of considering this and, and pulling all this stuff together, um, you know, next question I have for you is, if someone's doing this, why would they consider packaging when they're doing their marketing campaign? You know, what, what is, what does that do to them? You know, or their, or their brand yeah. is doing this. So, um, to me, this is my humble opinion, right? As the self, as Cliff calls me the packaging guru. So listen up. No, uh, no, listen. <laughs> now to me, uh, just kidding. Yeah. So listen, to me, um, logos, so, so today logos are out, right? You, you say, what? Wait, wait, it's all about my brand, and I want my brand to get out there, and these people have to know about my company. And that's good, and, we're, and you're certainly going to have your brand there. Um, to me, basically, you want to build an experience of the person opening the box. You want to wish them a happy day. Like, have a great day, right? You want to give them a coffee mug that has something on it that they could put in their cupboard and serve to a guest, not just a big logo that you want to just throw on a mug. That's my opinion, right? And I got that opinion from one of my dear friends in the industry, so I'm not going to take credit for it. Uh, she's the guru of, of that. So, um, you know, but it made me stop and think and be like, yeah, look, you know, we want to build a story, right? We want to, we want this box to arrive with a story. And you see a couple of things here, right? Like somebody, these are uh, the, the, the Volkswagen thing here um, on your screen. You know, yeah, that, that was a great Volkswagen. presentation. Yeah, that Volkswagen one is actually a set of earbuds in yeah. there. And they look yeah. like the little amplifiers on the stage and it's plugged into the guitar. But that's the story it tells about, you know, earbuds on there. And you look at it and you go, okay, seriously, what, you know, that's where it started out as, is talking about yeah. earbuds. How do we deliver them out there? And, and you could say the three products that are on your screen sort of give you a little bit of, you know, different budgets, right? The one in the middle sort of has a label on the outside of there, and, and, but yet it has printed inserts to it. And, you know, it sends its own message. And if you look, you know, uh, be an orange, if you're comparing apples to apples, be an orange, you know, like how to stand out, right? That's telling you. And that one has a, uh, yeah, that one brings in the olfactory senses on it because it has an orange um, air freshener built into it. So 
when you open that box up, you get that sensation of smelling an orange, not just seeing it, yeah. but you get this sensory, you know, overload of like, wow, it just kind of completes that experience. Yeah, we just came up with these, what I call band-aids, but we put essential oils in them and we just did one cotton candy for a thing. But yeah, now you can add scents, right? It's just all just different stuff that's coming up. But, and then the other side here, the, uh, you know, the box pack that's on the, on the, on the left-hand side, you know, there's a fine example of like a really wow experience. That's amazing. Somebody, right? Like they get this thing and it's a whole kit and look at this, look at it. the box is neater than the package. Once you take it out, you sort of want to go back to the box and show people, right? Um, yeah that's when you know you hit a home run with the packaging side of it at least. But each one of these tell, tell a whole story, and that's what it's all about, you know, um, from a marketing campaign. And we work with marketing teams as well, right, um, that, you know, from, from your end client marketing teams, like I said before, and we work with them to try and go, yeah, let's, let's take it to here. They have some great ideas. Your clients have ideas. We take them, try and bring them to life, try and embellish on them a little bit, but, yeah. you know. Um, that's why you have to consider in a, in a marketing campaign. It, it's great to get a gift. It really is. You know, you could have just done the earbuds in a box. Think about that. Yeah. I mean that, that, you know, the left there, I would, I would hold on to that just to hold on to the box. I think it's a cool looking box. You know, yeah. I would, you know, the product's cool and, and all that, but the box I'm like, you know, that, you know, some people keep other mementos. I'd keep that box just because I think it's really cool. <laughs> I'm weird like that, but hence yeah. The, hence the keepsake box, right? So exactly. that's why I named the company the way I did, right? You're exactly right in saying that. I always said our we want to make boxes good enough so that people keep them. I don't, I don't. Some of our boxes, people are going to put paper clips, rubber bands, you know, use it as a potting plant, you know, um, but but keep it and keep it memorable. I always, you want to do the best thing in the world and drive home something, put somebody's name on it. So Take one of these boxes and put Paul on it you know you're going to put it on your shelf yeah. and it's going to last forever because nobody throws out something with your name on it right so our most successful campaigns are ones that they take the time and do the vdp and rematch up the ones and send it out uh, so everybody you know fall gets falls box um but that's a huge that's a huge concept uh, uh but, that we try and bestow upon it because you want the people because don't forget your logo's on that box whether it be big or small they're keeping that, they're putting it on their shelf and they're keeping you and that experience that they had in the forefront. So that, that leads into the next one is, you know, why, why print a box when you can put a label on it, right? What does that do? Yeah. For, you know, it, it, anybody can slap a label on a box and just call it good. But, you know, what does it do by putting, you know, the packaging and whatnot out there in, in your mind? I mean, we, we sell the stuff, we live it every day, but, you know, people go, I can just print a label and slap it on a box. Well, it doesn't really give you that same experience, right? You know, yeah. and on the, on the, um, you know, it tells a story. Right? Yeah. You, you get the yeah, mother I mean, left in this, this white box and you go, yeah, that's cool, whatever. But, you know, Starbucks has it nailed, right? You see how they're yeah, doing it, their, it, their Been There series, right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, even as simple as that, right? Like, you know, a white box to a thing, you know, you could tell a story. You can bring to light a brand. You can bring to light an idea. You can bring to light a campaign, right? So, so most folks go, I want a regular brown box. We'll just put an insert card in it, right? Okay, well, yeah, that's going to drive home something, right? But, but it doesn't do it in an impactful way as much as printing the box and receiving that in. And it sort of gives the appearance that you care, right? You thought about the person at least, you know, um, it what just wasn't like here, here you go, take your mug and go home, right? Like, you know, like, you know, here's a Brandon mug. Thanks for all you do. Right. I, I you know, I, I say it bluntly and I apologize, but you know, um, you know, that's the reality. That's not, of it. I don't think that's the message when you start out and somebody says, let's send somebody a mug for whatever reason. Right. Um, I don't think that's the message they want to drive. And I'm sure the people are appreciative of getting a mug, but it's sort of like, it's another mug. Right. But if you send it in something that's a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more colorful, even, you know, and this is showing how simple it could be from Starbucks just to put, you know, this black print on a craft box. You right. can do it. But a label says, I don't know. It says, the packaging, yeah. you know, it serves as protection when you're shipping it out as well. It, it needs to be packaged to be protected. So why not utilize that real estate? on the box to really get your message out there and do it in a very impactful way that doesn't, I don't want to say look cheap, but looks professional. Like you really put it together. 
right? You yeah. thought about awesome this. Point. Awesome point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It has that real estate ability. And, you know, some boxes have a little bit more real estate than others on it that you can print and put, you know, you don't have to do the card, print it on the box, the lid of the box, right? You know, inside lid and, yeah. and have it look a little bit more like, Hey, this is, this is you know, a little bit professional look. That's what you're going for. So I'm going to, I'm going to shift the tables a little bit here as we go through and we kind of talked about all the benefits of the packaging and whatnot. Um, as folks are going through going, all right, now you've got me sold on this. We like the idea of packaging it and putting it all together. And we love this, the story you guys are going to tell with it. You know, it's like, to me, it's like going to the store, going shopping at the grocery store, right? There's so many options out there that you can take and, and use. You mind sharing a couple, you know, you know, materials we can use and, and how we can apply them out there. Yeah, sure. Um, I'd love to. So yeah, my first, um, my first drive when I start to talk to people is just narrowing them down, right? Um, narrowing, and the reason is, is that there's so many different options out there and you can get caught up. So we talk about budget and we talk about, you know, a scope and, and, and campaign, but then we talk about like, you know, what, what's your vision? Like I, I ask the questions, what, what do you think this box should look like when it gets there? Um, most of our stuff is made of paper. Most of the boxes that you're doing are made of paper. There are wood ones out there, the plastic. We'll go into a couple of different ones that are out. I mean, we're keepsake box, so it's more of a box thing for us and tissue and gift wrap and paper and printing. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more on that line. So, um, you know, you're, you're dealing with either corrugated for corrugated boxes. Corrugated comes a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner. Um, flutes that are on there. Printing papers, we have 22 different colors that are in our catalog that you can just pick from, pick a color, right? We will try and match it to that. Or, you know, we can print any color you need. Um, it's just, you know, we give you these. It's, it's a little bit cheaper than printing. You don't have to print them, so it's good. Um, you know, some of the print options that we use, we're using, um, you know, Spot UV, uh, you know, where we give a nice gloss sheen to the print itself. I, you can sort I of see into the picture gloss. here. Yeah, it adds yeah. yeah. so that, the overall piece to it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, and you're absolutely right. It has a true, true luxury feeling to it. Um, all of our boxes, uh, not the corrugated ones, but all of our keepsake boxes are soft touch lamination, right? So you get that really soft, thanks to Apple years ago, that Apple feel that everybody wanted. I mean, you know, that's now um, a standard on everything that we do. Um, you can foil stamp in many different colors. Um, you know, printing, printing wise, we talked about a little bit. That's really been the eye opener here of what we can do. So it's, you know, it's CMYK digital printing. Um, can't do PMS colors, um, not in the short run stuff. You know, once we talk PMS colors, we're going on our big press, which we have. Um, but it's a little bit more for the upper quantity side. Um, but so but let's, let's know, CMYK I, for our audience that may not know what CMYK is. What what does that mean? In, in our so world, CMYK yeah, th think about your printer on your desktop right now, right? You 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 pop in cartridges that are black, yellow, uh, magenta, and cyan. Blue, magenta, yellow, black. Um, that's CMYK. That's what it stands for. And the, the makeup of those four colors, right? It's called four color process. Can basically do any color. There's millions of colors that can do by blending those four colors together. So when we talk digital printing, it's CMYK printing. Um, there's some, just like any print, you might have light magenta, light cyan, that adds to the gamut to sort of hit some different colors. Um, but we talk about, just skipping back to technology for a second, not too long, is that, you know, the printers out there right now hit more uh, PMS colors. So PMS colors are basically Coca-Cola red. Coca-Cola went to a company called Pantone, and they said, look, we want our red to look this red across anything that we print on. Right. Right. Uh, so they developed this way of, of basically, you know, uh, honing in that color. And they have a whole book of all these different colors. Think of it as paints in a paint store um, and, and how they mix ink to come up with those. So, so when we talk about PMS colors, uh, printing digital can hit, I think it's now up to about 70% of all the total PMS colors. So I don't hey, want to bore you print. with printing. Lingo. No, but that, that, <laughs> all, that all lays into it because people that may have that Coca-Cola red, may be expecting this to hit that that red of the PMS color, but we have to kind of make it look in the CMYK world, it's a replication of that PMS as best we can. We can hit it, like you said, about 70% of the time. You know, it's never yeah. always an exact match, but it's always fairly close because using those four colors to hit the one. 
So that really, that that's part of the whole, um, the process. I mean, it's very technical side of it, but that all plays yeah. into it, right? I don't want to bore people with that, it, that portion of it, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. If I, if I had to say one of the cons, it would just be that, uh, you know, the con is that you can't hit those PMS colors, but the positive, the pro of it is, is that we can do 50 boxes and get really close because doing 50 boxes and having to hit that color. And I do it cosmetic companies all the time. We need this and we got to go out and print and they spend thousands on just printing 50 boxes. Um, but in the, but in the long term of what we're all doing, um, you know, CMYK is going to work just fine. It's going to look awesome. Uh, and then you got a bossing, right. Um, raising the paper off the stock, right. You know, having a feel that our, our print sort of gives it a little bit of a boss feel. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's just some different stuff, you know, that some options that that are out there for you. Yeah, you could you could mix those too. You can do, you know, the embossing with some foil and a spot UV and really give a tactile experience to the piece because it's not just, you know, when you feel it, because your hands, you, you know, you can it's another sense, you can feel all that. You go, wow, it just it gives you a different experience that, you know, isn't totally crazy on doing this stuff, but it you've got the medium to use it now. And sure. Sure. Yeah. And you can go and you, and you can use each step or not have it. And, you know, uh, again, we build it around what what the campaign is trying to drive or what you want to do. And each one adds a little bit more of a wow factor. That's all. Yeah. I, I know, um, you know, over the conversations that we've had, you also can laser, right? You can laser on there. I know you did a, a program where you guys did a branding iron and then you took the box and yeah. lasered on it to give that that effect. Do you have a sample of that there or? I, I don't have a sample of the laser side here, um, to be honest with you. But yeah, you can you could do that as well. You know you what, do that what was as that well. like doing that? Were you guys were you testing? What's that? What was that like doing that to with the branding iron inside of it to give the effect of um, the uh, uh, the box looking like it was branded on the laser? You guys used yeah. So so that was an interesting campaign. Uh, it was great because it was, I just remember because it was so hard to get the, the, the branding irons, uh, <laughs> for the customer to get the branding irons. That's all I remember it for. But yeah, I mean, it's a great embellishment. It sort of drove home that message, right? Like, you know, it sort of put the whole thing together. Why the branding iron, why it was there. And it was Cadillac and it was, you know, you could, I always want, I, I didn't, I wanted to get one so I could sear my, my steak with the Cadillac branding. But, um, you know, that, there's another edge to that, uh, and, and the laser, laser engraving side that, you know, that, that you can add to the element of these, of these boxes, right? Um, it's just one of the many things that we do that, you know, work with you and go, okay, you know, I wish I had one for you, but I don't. No, but, that's you fine. Know. It, 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 it just goes to show that the creativity we can use on this stuff with the techniques that are available to us. That's why people go to folks like us and you to, to come up with that creative treatment to it, that, you know, because like I said, we deal with folks that are smaller groups up to large agencies that go, we want this effect with some very creative folks out there. And by talking to professionals like us, we're able to help really bring to light what their their vision is on doing something like this. So that's what I love doing every day. So <laughs> no two days are ever the same. That's the beauty of this business, right? Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. You're right. So over, you know, over the last 18 months or so, we've all um, a lot of things have changed. Right. What role, um, you know, during the last 18 months has packaging played and how do you see it as we're, you know, heading out of the pandemic and moving forward? Do you see it, you know, increasing, decreasing or the availability of this now, you know, folks seeing it going, this is a great medium and how do we keep using it to engage folks? Yeah. So um, last, what was it, March, right? Uh, we were just as scared as everybody else, business-wise. I mean, personally, we were all had our fears. Um, but from a business standpoint, where were we going? What was this going to do? We had no idea, um, you know, what the next step was from, from the pandemic side. Um, little did we know at the time that it would be my best year in 20-plus years, right? And, and why is that? I mean, Sales-wise, it took off, and we were just trying to hold on. And I mean, trying to, you know, we, we worked throughout the entire pandemic printing is deemed essential for what it was. We did do some yeah. other stuff, uh, spun a little bit to shields and stuff. I'm not getting into that and did some hospitals and we do some you know, pharmaceutical stuff that has to be done. Um, 
But the pandemic side of it uh, caused packaging to just boom. It was the only form of communication, right? Um, and when I say that is, is that people didn't know how to remotely get a hold of people and, you know, in the beginning and for the first few months, it was scary. And then all of a sudden, it just started to pick up as marketing teams got together and they said, well, we got to do something. What are we doing? Right. And packaging was it. We can send promotional products out to people, welcome them, feel good kit. We're, with, we're in this together. Um, you know, remote hire started to happening and then they would send remote hire kits. Um, it's probably what one you're showing here, maybe, you know, um, yeah. It's, it's basically, you know, packaging became the it, and that's what really drove what you're seeing now. Um, it's the way to communicate. It's the way to drive sales campaigns, right? Uh, you know, as we, and for the, and for the year, it, it was a boom. It was a boom. It drove us to sort of, you know, go crazy in Excel, and I purchased, I don't know how much, millions in equipment to, to keep up with demand. It drove the timelines through the roof, as you know, Paul, yeah. right? You probably okay. experienced some of that. Uh, we were fortunate enough to keep just about where we were, but some of these times, you were waiting just for a plain flat box 21 days, right? Like, you know, that, that was the thing, but we're over that, we're through it. So how, how does it take us going forward? Um, I think it really brought packaging to life, right? I think that, um, you know, I, we have not seen a slowdown, right? We thought at the end of last year, holiday season mixed with the pandemic, you know, people were still not unsure where we were going. We said, man, January, February, we're going to see a dip. I think January, February were our best months, right? Um, it is just continuing to surprise us. It's continuing to be the it um, in, in driving sales campaigns and driving all different versions. You see here, high school diplomas, right? Kids, um, last year, we did so many of these boxes for kids, whether it was they're sending them a couple, you know, the, uh, a hat from their school or a scarf or the, or, or, or the diploma like this. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it impacts so many different, it impacted everything, but it impacts in so many different lives. And, and moving forward, we're still doing these diploma boxes, right? We're still sending out congratulatory kits. It, 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 might, it might not be the diploma in it because they're getting, you know, most kids are getting it now, uh, you know, via normal ceremony, um, well, quasi-normal ceremony. Right, right. Um, but they're also getting gifts, right? Well, we gave them a gift last year. We got to give them a gift this year, right? Well, we sent out uh, our employees, a, a, you know, a, a welcome kit. You know, we should send everybody a, a kit out the door. Um, influencer, the influencer market during the pandemic was huge. I can't tell you how many times – I love to see our boxes out there um, on YouTube, on Instagram, um, you know, being retweeted, every social media platform that's out there. Um, influencers, uh, I think, I, what was the stat I heard the other day? It's not quite half, but the amount of marketing that's being spent, marketing budgets is being spent on influencers um, oh, is, is almost that to advertising, right? Like, you know, I, they get more out of, sending it to an influencer that in the cosmetic world that touches millions of people and their videos get millions of views than they would an advertisement on TV. Right. And to do that, they have to present it in such a way. So, um, you know, we're challenged every day to do something different. I'm building a box right now. That's four foot by four foot by six foot high to send to three. influencers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. It, it, it's a big, it's an actual dollhouse that these three, uh, young kids can play. And so, so um, that market, that influencer market has, has really come to light during the pandemic because we all had nothing to do but to watch some videos. Right. Um, I think it continues on. I think it grows stronger. I think the, the customers, your customers out there will challenge us to, to sort of come up with new and exciting things to do. We have a few of them and um, that are, that are now here and now, and some that are in the works, but um, you know, that's where I feel that that whole packaging, I think it's here to stay. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. I see a lot more people with the, the onboarding kits for employees that are, you know, still coming on that are that are new to the organization. That's their first point of contact with the organization. Um, those are still there, the, the diplomas. It just creates a really good experience for the end user. 
you know, who knew that we could be, you know, part marketing person and also have to have a part psychology degree to, you talked about the endorphins early on. There's a lot of things that go into this whole experience, right? Um, I know my, my oldest son um, is graduating high school, just graduated high school this year. And the packages that he got over the last year were amazing from these universities and schools. One, I mean, it was, it's limited, limitless by your imagination, right? You see all the different ways you can do it. He received a package that was the school flag, a little flag, you know, three foot by five foot that was folded up around the packaging and sealed. And that was the delivery mechanism that held the box was the actual flag as the, the outer wrap of it. Um, That's awesome. It was really cool and to the point that I was like, oh, I love this idea. I thought it was fantastic. But as you start thinking about like all the accessories that you can do with it, what, you know, as you're seeing these things, what are some things that you could use to enhance packaging on this stuff? You know? Yeah. So basically um, there's, there's a lot. So, so we talk, we're not just talking corrugated box, right? Anymore. So um, we talked a little bit about it. So um, things like sound chips, right? We just did one for Jerry Jones of the Cowboys open up the box. It was him talking with a picture of him on the inside lid, right? Um, you got sound chips, you got video, video screens, right? That you can sort of, uh, you know, open up the box and there's a video screen playing. Um, you have like, you have your inserts, you know, printed insert is, is pretty much a standard. If you want to have a message that goes with it, if you're not going to print it on the inside lid, uh, a lot of the stuff we're doing, we do the hang tags, uh, and the inserts, hang tags, again, wrapping around a product if you just want to drive home a little certain cue to it. Um, all this stuff, belly bands. You can go gift wrap tissue paper. We're one of only two people in the U.S. that do printed four-color tissue paper. Um, you guys have the lowest minimum on that, too, on the tissue, because I know, like, the industry standard is, like, 500 sheets of tissue. And you guys are doing five, what? 5,000. 5, 4,800 4, sheets. Oh, yeah. And it only offers it in one or two colors. We do it in four colors and it's 50 sheets. So my thing there is, is that not every campaign has got to be 5,000 boxes. We know that. So the bring it to marketplace in, in a realm where it fits, right? Um, tissue paper is, I can't tell you, that machine does not stop. It is the greatest because every, every one of your customers should have tissue paper in, in their office, right? Somebody comes, you get a gift bag, you throw a piece of branded tissue paper in there, you're instantly done. You put a welcome gift, you know, for for a, a, a guest that might be coming to their office or something, um, it just works, right? And you're seeing more and more companies send out stuff with everyone has to have wrapped in tissue paper just because it drives that brand. And, and when they're sending it to their customers or their end clients, it, it sort of says we care, right? We have it wrapped in yeah. tissue paper and stuff. You got um, the tissue and the wrapped in and all, all that good stuff with it. And the, the newest technology out there is NSC or near field communication, right? Yeah. That, that to me is like yeah. the big buzzword right now. And we've been touting that for the last, I'd say about two years, two, three years since the technology come out. How are you guys utilizing NFC technology in the box world? So uh, a few months ago, uh, NFC technology is great. So it's just coming to pass. And I'm going to tell you, it's been around for forever. But Apple sort of cornered the market and didn't allow it to proceed. They wanted to use it for the Apple Pay. And if nobody, and the best thing I can describe NFC technology is, is Apple Pay when you go up to the register and you tap, it says tap here and you tap yeah. your phone. Inside your phone has this communication device that basically is looking for, um, you know, an, an electronic ping. Um, NFC stands for near field communication. So it's got to be within an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in there. Um, all Androids have it, but Apple's, Apple phones 10 and above, uh, Apple then uh, said, okay, we're not going to try and hoard this technology. We'll make it open to the masses. It's where, it's where we're going. It's where everybody, um, I feel, it's where everything is going to head. NFC technology is basically a little round chip, right, that goes in uh, to our boxes. I'm going to hold up my first product here, but we call it a smart box, right? So this smart box within this lid, it says here, tap here. And that's the little symbol that we use. And underneath this embedded into this box is basically a chip. Um, you tap your phone on this and it will drive it to our back end system and then out to anywhere you want, any website, a video, a, a, a registration for an event. 
it's huge for registration for events because it drives you to the registration page. You could do a raffle. We can randomly pick in the background of our of our, um, our back end system. We can pick two winners, two chips that automatically win a raffle when they get it. So uh, NFC technology, even beyond boxes, they're putting it into journals, right? Um, there's a company out there that does it into a notepad if you wanted to do it. It's yeah, just we, basically we a new, new way to do it. And it, it, we yeah. had it to a song list. Yeah, and, and out there now, is it's going to be our business card. So, Paul, you're not going to have to carry 7,000 business cards. You're just going to carry one. And when me and you meet, you're going to pull out your business card, and I'm going to tap my phone on your business card, and then you're going to put it back in your pocket because I'm going to have all your information on my phone. That's where NFC technology is headed. It's already here. You can buy the business card, but it's about $130 for one card now. Looks really neat, but um, – you can put a sticker on your wall, a chip on your wall uh, in your office and tap your phone and it would automatically text your wife, hey, I'm leaving from work or husband, hey, I'm leaving, for, you know, um, leaving from work right now, every night. So you could tap it and tap it, right? So this technology is only going to grow. Uh, we're in the forefront of it on the box world. These things are just hitting the market and they're loving it. We are loving it too because it's flying off the, sh you know, flying off the shelf as, as an idea. It's, it's the latest um, and greatest. It's a great way to engage. You can, you can then change up wherever it goes to. If it's a website page, you can adjust that website page up until the minute the event happens. You want a last minute change on it, a change to the yeah. agenda without having to reprint stuff. Boom, it's all there. They're engaging with their phones anyway. So you can tie both yeah. in. And, and Paul, you, you hit a point. We On, on our chips, we can set um, what we call experiences. So when you tap it, we call an experience, right? So I can have it come up and say, here, tap here for, uh, you know, a video or, or, or speech from our vice president, right? And at the end, the vice president can say, hey, tap your box again to get a speech from our president of our company. So every time you tap, you can have the same experience or we can have multiple experiences, right? So this is good. Think about cosmetics when people are doing cosmetics, um, you know, you get it on the box, you get the cosmetics, and it's somebody teaching you how to put it on. Right. It's a video about how to apply the cosmetic sample you just got. Or if it's a hotel, you know, hey, look, book a registration right through here. We drive it to their website page. Right. Or, you know, join us for an event. We drive it right to the registration page. Um, so that's and it's cheap. It's inexpensive, you know, um, to put in the box. And, um, you know, and, you, and again, when you talk about changing. Yeah. At any time, even when the boxes are out in the field, you want to change it next month. Go right ahead. You know what I mean? Well, just give us a new website where to drive it or, or a new place to drive it to. And we can change every box on the fly that's already out in the field. Yeah. So, so NFC technology is great. So as, as you're going through it, I know we talked a lot about boxes and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of other packaging opportunities that are out there beyond the box, right? We kind of laugh, but you know, the box is the big carrier, everything, um, you know, other things we can do. We've talked about the, the, um, the branded tissue paper to enhance that experience, the, the bags, you know, if you're using a paint can or a pillow pod, um, a mailing tube, stuff that doesn't get, you know, you, you look at it and you go, wait a minute, I could use it a little bit differently. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in lumpy mail. Lumpy mail doesn't get lost on somebody's desk. If you're doing, yeah. you know, an envelope or a postcard, it gets stuck on somebody's desk and put in a pile and it's never seen from or heard from again. And all these, these different um, packaging options, you know, a paint can, maybe put a paintbrush in there and a t-shirt, you yeah. know. Um, one, one, of the coolest, one of the coolest projects you say paint can, one of the coolest projects we did, it was for, I think, Laura Geller, the, the cosmetic thing. Uh, she had something that represented paint and we took a paint can, we made a custom label all around it we used our insert technology that we use in the boxes and we put it in the paint can in itself and had the product in there and the person got a paint can and it, and it hit home with the, with the, you know, with the campaign that they were trying to push that these cosmetics were, I don't know, paint your face or whatever it was in these RC <laughs> colors. And it worked, right? I mean, the label, literally the label was a black and white label. The inside was color. Um, you know, you talk about the surprise of opening up a can, right? And, yeah. and, and getting a can and having to go open it up and find something. And that was endorphins building up. That's humongous, right? Uh, tubes, you can put labels on and wrap them around and over wrap them in tubes. Um, you know, all the way up to the gift bag, like I said, with a custom crinkle cut or, or a printed gift bag. Uh, 
again, all this stuff plays plays a point. You know, crinkle cut is a is a. I can't tell you how many truck trailer loads of crinkle oh. cut <laughs> we go through. Um, it's a great thing. I mean, tissue. When, again, when we talk about you know sending stuff out and, and packaging and how how it has to get there safely, right? Crinkle cut provides that much better than you know tissue paper is the worst thing you can put into something unless it's lightweight and it doesn't never going to break. Um, but crinkle cut is um, you know a, a very good protector, right? And it comes in all these different colors and it can add to the experience and add to the packaging. So yeah, um, yeah beyond the box, there are a multitude of things that we can do. Uh, you know, you can present to, to a client um, okay. in different ways and different things. Are there are there any final thoughts you want to share with our audience, or do we want to do we have any questions in there, Cliff, that have come in um, over the course of this that we could fire off? Uh, actually, we do. I'd uh, happy to do those, um, and then we can have Andy give his final thoughts. One of the questions, uh, a few of the questions. One: Are there any sustainable options out there as it, re it relates to packaging? Yeah, so um, sustainability is awesome. Um, it is a driving factor in many, many corporations. Everybody wants to do their part. Um, so what's good about boxes that we're saying, right, corrugated is 50% um, post-consumer waste. That's what they've gotten the corrugated market to. It's up from where it was at 30. And what, what that basically means is it's made of 50% recyclable material and 50% virgin fiber, right? So most of your corrugators mills that are making sheets they're, they're making out of that now you can get a hundred percent post consumable but the package falls apart in the rain <laughs> right <laughs> there's got to be something that holds it together so so um there's that in the in the in the in the realm of um you know corrugated and keeping it sustainable for our for our keepsake boxes again ones that look you know relative like this i'm just holding it back up um we have what we call our Kiko options, the keepsake eco option, where we take the foam element out of it, that custom cut foam, and we use corrugated instead. So it's just, and we take the film lamination off or that soft touch lamination, and we just do a raw paper. Um, I, signed up, I, I kind of put um, eco in the, in the organic fruit category, right? Eco-friendly products and again, a fruit uh, category where they're expensive and ugly, right? You ever look at an apple that's organic? It's not as pretty as the one over here that's not organic, and it's a lot more expensive. For us, we take the expensive part out. It's the same price, right? There's no difference in our eco products. Um, there's no reason for it. That's I think sometimes that's a marketing thing where it's like, oh, let's, just, that, let's charge more. Cause it's yeah, you're, help, you're able right? to help the environment out. Yeah, because when all the eco stuff first came out, it was almost double everything else, and now it's right down on par with everything else right now. So that's that's great. Um, Cliff, yeah, you so that's, um, you know, and, and, and the presentation, yes, it does take away a little bit of soft touch, but, but here's the deal. I, I would caution people, um, I'm getting wrapped up. So, um, so a lot of companies have gotten wrapped up in the eco-friendly options and that's fantastic. Um, companies like Lululemon is probably one of the best. They have a, all sustainable. They want everything sustainable, but within thresholds. Mm -hmm. So um, their threshold is, is like, look, we know there's going to be plastic in the world and it has to be used at some point in time, but let's just do it minimis, uh, you know, as, as minimalistic as we can in our packaging. Wherever we can cut, let's cut. But they don't set these high standard parameters by which, you know, they have, you're running around trying to find an option that might not exist or might not really do well in traveling, right? Like, you know, for, the product's got to get there from point A to point B, but I want it to be 100% recyclable cardboard. I'm like, you know, that's like flimsy as anything, right? You know, so you got to go with 50%. So, so again, um, that sustainability. There are options out there. Is what I'm how to answer the question, um, and we can work within the parameters of what level you want that to be. Just expect that the higher you go, it will start to get expensive. Yeah. Um, if you're trying to hit that high plateau mark and, and it might be what your company wants to do. It might be everything about it, but, um, but it is a big effort out there and we've adapted to it. So. Perfect. Um, I think the clip is say we got about two more questions. We got time for two more questions. Yeah. Two more questions and one quick comment. Uh, someone said that the Band-Aid idea with the essential oil, by the way, brilliant, um, brilliant idea <laughs> there. I thought that's amazing. Um, 
Yeah, it, we, it actually looks like a Band-Aid. We made this packaging with vinyl on the top of it because you got the oil can't touch the box, so you got to sort of protect it in some way. But uh, it was a brain. I just was um, getting ready in the morning one day and said, wow, if it could smell. I don't know why I was smelling, but I'm like, we should really have scents to our boxes. So, uh, yeah, it's one of the things. Good. It, it's actually out there. I don't think I've ever made a, mark, a marketing piece about it, but I should. But, uh, yeah, we, I went out and bought a whole bunch of essential oils the next day. I got a whole line, like a spice rack. And it's very simple to do, and it's very inexpensive. But, you know, um, you know it's like that orange box. You know, it smells orange when you do it. It just drives it home a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for me. That so there, uh, there was a question here. Are there any packaging ideas and quotes that you would refrain from? For instance, uh, adding glitter, loose glitter to a box. Uh, <laughs> evidently, the experience... <laughs> here has been, uh, it was all over the place and very frustrating. So if somebody came to you, and I guess this could be directed to you, Paul, um, would you uh, would you suggest to someone they not do that? I uh, That stuff is like so static and sticky to you, I would not recommend it. Is it available? Yes. Do I want to do it? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, it's, it's a hot mess. If you want to send something out to somebody you didn't like, I would say, yeah, go for it. Because they will be um, cursing your name for a while afterwards because you'll find that for years to come in every yeah. creek and crevice in your house, your office, your <laughs> car, your clothes, your ears, it'll be around for a long time. So is it doable? Yeah. Yes. Do I want to do it? Probably not. <laughs> Just a quick follow-up that I clipped it. Packaging peanuts. Yeah, it has, you know, that's another one that's just everybody always hated, right? You know, you get these yeah. peanuts are all over, they're staticky. Um, and I will sell this, uh, crinkle cut, as popular as it is, on apparel goods. Uh, that's a no-no for us, right? So you're sending a shirt, sweatshirt or shirt. Uh, I don't know if you've ever gotten one with crinkle cut, but you just open up and you hold up the shirt and it's just filled with crinkle cut, right? So we sort of say, you can do it. We just put it in a poly bag, Um you know, so there's things like that that we've just found in our experience that, you know, you, you might Stay not want to use. Yeah. Glitter being top. Yeah, and that's that's why people come to us for that exact reason, right? Avoid this, yeah. do this, don't do that. So, Andy, are there any um, final questions that you got or that you've heard of? Um, or final there, is, there, is, there is one more question, Paul. Are there any stats that uh, prove that packaging enhances the overall impact and or results of a program? Oh, good one. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure there are. Uh, yeah, I'd love to say yes. Uh, look to here. Um, I know there's there's that, and, I, and I, I, that's a challenge to me. I think Cliff, I can find that. So do you, if you know who that question is, I, I'm gonna find I'm gonna find some info on that because that would be good to me and good in the future that I can use. Um, I'll send that out for you on your behalf for sure. Yeah, I, I'm sure there is. I, I know that there, there are stats on printing campaigns versus, you know, print was a dying breed when, when Apple iPhones and iPads and social media came into thing. And now print's coming back because people want tangible products in their hands, right? They want to go to the mailbox and see something. Well, you've right? got They're an entire all this generation. Stuff. I mean, you have an entire generation that hasn't seen this. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm 49, right? And I grew up with it. And then it's that pendulum swung going from the print world in the nineties over to everything digital. And you lost, you know, 20 years of everything going digital. And now that print world has come back to a new generation to really, you know, engage with the audience. Sure. On it. So anyway, if, if you think about it, your, e your emails are your junk mail and it gets thrown away and nobody even that, that yeah. form of campaign is so yeah. played out that people don't even want to use it. So now it's tangible. Right now, it's let's send them something. So, so I, I want to be. Uh, but but, but yeah. answer that question, Cliff. I'm going to find out. <laughs> we'll, we'll get, once we get, we'll, we'll pass it out to everybody that was on the call. Um, I want to be respectful of everybody's time on here. I want to be um, uh, say a big thank you, Andy, for taking the time to spend with us and, and our clients out there to really in, embrace and enlighten them out of the whole packaging world. Um, you know. Well, Cliff, I'll let you, into, you know, thank I'm you very it. much for doing it, Andy. Uh, I, I love doing them. I love, you know, helping you guys and helping your clients, you know, find a great packaging solution. You know, we're always here for you um, and, and for your clients. If you need to jump on a call with me and get me on, um, 
you know, we'll, we'll help them out. We'll do a good job for, for, you know, even if it's just, even if we give them some advice, you know what I mean? But, but, uh, you know, embrace packaging. It's a good thing. <laughs> right. oh, it's a lovely thing. So for all you that are on, on the call right now, and we're wrapping up, um, we gave a list of the next couple full length, uh, we'll call them our feature films um, that are coming up in July and September and, and October. And throughout that time, you know, if you miss seeing me and Cliff and, and the rest of our crew over here, we're going to be doing a mini series so you can digest this in small little bites in 15 minutes and you can have your morning coffee and listen to me or whatnot. We'll do a mini series that we're going to launch out there as well. Um, and until we, we meet again, thank you everybody and happy marketing. All right. Thanks Andy and Cliff for helping us put it together. Thanks guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, have a good day. Bye-bye. All right. You too.